About two weeks ago, I decided to make a mini series, and this video is part two. You can watch part one here if you're interested. I basically just summed up everything about Albedo and Ryan until 2.3. It does, however, have the whole thought process carried over into this video. But if you want to watch this one first, it's okay too. So part two is going to include Ryan of Tears' goal and true motive, the true goal of the Primordial Human Project, a rendition of the magnum opus regarding Albedo, and a little bit on Rindo Tear, the heart of Noberius and what it is, and lastly a theory on Rindo Tear creating the true primordial human being. So without further ado, let's move on to the video. Starting off, I want to make a clarification on Rindo Tear's true goals and motives, because it seems that she isn't as evil as the game says, and that she wasn't driven to madness or corrupted in any sort of manner. The original Chinese script from the book Breeze Amidst the Forests says that Rindo Tear became a sinner and gave rise to countless monsters, but the translations to English say she was corrupted by their greed. But whose greed specifically? Is it Conrius? Celestius? Alchemists? Or maybe her own? What the book tries to to tell you is that she was corrupted by the greed of Conria, but that's from the perspective of Teyvat's people. So what I did instead is put together the two different sentences, then what should have been said is that Gold gave in to the sin of creating and unleashing those evil monsters, which would mean that she was led more by her own curiosity and doubt than greed for anyone to create and release those shadowy monsters. This makes her more innocent than what the book entails, but by doing so, Conria and Gold herself have crossed a line that the gods in Celestia called the heavenly principles, and the price they pay for crossing that line is nothing short of extinction, similar to Salvin Dagner and the Skyfrost Nail. But this time, Anria fought back. And in the midst of that, Ryan had to let loose the shadowy monsters, as well as allow Durin to show off his beauty and go to Mondstadt. And although they were utterly defeated, Conria intended to keep on fighting and made the Abyss Order. But Gold, however, intends to keep creating, which reveals more into what she really wants to achieve. Interestingly, her lore shows her intention to create more creatures and whatevers, as well as continue to pursue her craft in alchemy. But this time as Ryan, while still recovering from the impact of Conria's fall, for defying the God's rule, and the being she created even now starts to doubt those same laws placed upon them. While we're on the topic of creating, what you might not notice or think about is that Rindo Tear was already in the process of the Primordial Human Project, even before the events of the Cataclysm and possibly even before she created Durin. If anything, Durin was the first living or sentient being she created, along with the Rift creatures of course. After that, she then moved on to human creation, and create humans she did. These ominous words words spoken by Albedo tell of the multiple failures and experiments Ryan has done before creating Albedo. However, unbeknownst to Subject 1, the alchemist had tried the same experiment many times before he had come into being. Some of the rejects from failed experiments had been discarded, but had not died. These words, spoken within a few seconds, don't show enough how terrible the art of alchemy can get, chemia specifically, because it's not within the seven regions of Teyvat. But even after Albedo's creation, Ryan's journey to create things don't stop there. Apparently, as the two alchemists were traveling together, they stumbled upon the heart of Naberius, which, if taken from some demonology, Naberius is actually the same as Cerberus, but in a different form. For better context, Cerberus is basically the first form, and Noberius is one of the many other forms that he can take. With Cerberus being a three-headed hellhound, Noberius, on the other hand, is a very friendly and affluent marquee of the underworld, often depicted as a three-headed dog or a three-headed raven. But a few things that might interest you and Rindo Tear is that in one of his achievements, Noberius was said to have been set free by Hades to join the old gods as their equals. The old gods are from what I understand is the 12 Olympians, which includes Zeus, Poseidon, and the like. Naberius also has the power to restore and take away ranks and honors of the unworthy, both humans and demons alike, as it is his job as the Marquis to keep a political eye on everything happening in both the human and the underworld. A demon from the underworld that was set free to join the old gods, a fallen kingdom from under the world of Teyvat, crossing the line against the rule of the gods, and an alchemist from Kanria. Putting all this together, wouldn't you think that Rindo Tear is up to something very interesting? But before that, I'd like to talk about the Magnum Opus. 
One key part of information that Ryan left with Albedo is the remaining text pertaining to the magnum opus. And as we all know, the opus magnum or magnum opus is a term for the alchemical process known as the great work. This great work was, and still, is probably theorized to revolve around Albedo becoming Rubedo, with the theorized meaning of Albedo becoming evil and causing destruction. But the word Rubedo, or Iosis, in Greek, is pertained as the alchemical success of the magnum opus. And gold, or the philosopher's stone, is the end result of the transformation of the base prima materia becoming Rubido. Having said that, this theory only points fingers at Albedo becoming evil, which is not only very conflicting considering the whole point of the Opus Magnum, which is for chaos to become a perfect item or entity, but the fact that no one saw the huge elephant in the room just because we were too focused on one stage name. If we take the same Opus Magnum, and put the process into Ryan's perspective, this easily points to her creation of the primordial human being. And the word primordial human, the very first being, and the stages of alchemy could be the stages of which Ryan has been taking note of for creating the perfect being that she wishes to achieve. Meaning that Albedo, Durin, and even the primordial Albedo are only the first, second, and possibly third stage of Rhyndotir's journey through the magnum opus, with either the first Albedo or Durin signifying the stage of Negrade meaning decomposition and putrefaction, or decay and rotting, and albedo being whiteness, signifying purity. Having said this, Ryan still needs to go through Citrinitas before finally moving on to Rubedo and create the perfect being, which is what I think Rindo Tyr has been wanting to do all this time, even before anything related to the cataclysm occurred, hence the true goal of the primordial human project. So here's where I'll start to delve deeper into Ryan's motives using theory. And our prime example is the primordial human project, Albedo himself, and the heart of Naberius. Again, I implore you to take this with a grain of salt. Because theories will only be theories that and I just want to talk more about alchemy. So please, uh, I don't know, calm down, I guess. <laughs> So, if we link the heart of Noberius with Ryan's primordial human project, as well as the god's unquestionable laws on mankind, I get the terrifying feeling that Ryan used the heart to create another being, one that's far better and even more perfect than the perfect albedo we know, one capable of exceeding the mere principles of humans, and one that perceives that the principle of gods are imperfect or incorrect, and even so far as to question their control over mankind, because such is the arrogance of man, so much so that even albedo Bedo himself mentions this at the end of our conversation with him in 2.3. Take a listen. The only thing is that sometimes, when I think about how mighty the power of alchemy is, I feel so small. As beings who set foot in this world, how arrogant are we in desiring to control our destiny and in desiring to create? Is creation an arrogant act, Traveler? If not, why do we call the ones that created us and control us gods? If it is, then what qualifies us to call ourselves creators? How far must we take our reverence and respect, and what purpose does it serve? Nothing special, but whenever I think about it, I feel a twinge of grief. An artificial being that doubts the principle set by the gods. One that dares to find what the gods themselves hide. An alchemist that creates artificial beings as well as a fallen kingdom that defied the gods' rule. Finally, a demon of the underworld yet has become one of the gods themselves and has been found by that alchemist who questions the gods. This is possibly, and theoretically, the true primordial being that Rindo Tyr was pursuing to create, the primordial human that defies the gods. With those words from the chief alchemist, as well as my own words, I will end this video here. For the next video, I think you guys might already know. I've been hinting at some key words like arrogance, creation, arrogations and humans, principles and gods, so I think you guys already know who this video is going to be about. I know this ends in quite a cliffhanger, but I wanted to keep the videos in short 10 minute segments instead of full 20 minute ramblings. That way I get to keep the focus of each video on topics that I specifically want to discuss and keep you guys from getting confused or sidetracked for having too many topics. 
The third video for this mini-series is going to be my take on the lucrative laws set by the gods upon mankind, the sustainer of heavenly principles, and the lucrative position the gods have over humans. And possibly finally, a fourth video containing the full theory on Rindo Tear's greatest creation, that is, the true primordial human, the recreation of Noberius. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and listening to my video. If you guys want to see more of my videos and theories, make sure to hit the like button and comment your thoughts as well as subscribing and clicking on the bell icon to stay up to date on my next video. And with that, I'll see you guys later.